It's been said before that the fastest way to ruin your story is to involve your players. But what do you do when your players absolutely break your Dungeons & Dragons 5e game? Seriously, what do you do? Oh, and if you're a player and you don't already know what I'm talking about based on the thumbnail, then stick around, because I'm gonna teach you how to break your Dungeon Masters game. Let's get started. Welcome adventurers, what's going on guys? My name is Cody, this is Taking 20, a channel about all things role-playing games. So if you guys don't know, what we're talking about today is the Conjure Woodland Beings spell. It's a fourth level spell for druids and rangers and requires only one action to cast. The spell lasts up to an hour and when you cast it, you have a few different options that you can choose from of fey creatures to summon. One Fey of a CR 2 or lower, two Fey of a CR 1 or lower, four CR 1 halves, or eight CR 1 fourths. Looking over the list of Fey that can be summoned, the one that we care about is the CR 1 fourth Pixie. Why you ask? Because Pixies get a neat little ability that lets them cast a plethora of spells once per day, the prize winner here being Polymorph. So in essence, the combo works like this. You take a party of level eight adventurers. The druid then casts Conjure Woodland Beings. The DM asks what they would like to summon and they reply eight pixies. When the pixie shows up, the druid tells them to cast Polymorph on the party, turning the entire party into four to five T-Rexes with 136 life each, a 10 foot reach, a bite attack of plus 10 to hit for 4d12 plus seven piercing damage and then the pixies need to go and hide. This, my friends, is a game-breaking combo. But there are a couple of things to note here. This combo only works if the dungeon master lets the players choose their summoned fey. The spell 100% says that the dungeon master determines which creatures appear from each of those categories and options. And while all summon spells in the Adventures League let the players make the decision on what gets summoned, Pixies are not on the approved list of summonable creatures. So real quick to settle any arguments about whether this works or not, I'll save you the time. It totally and completely does. When the Druid casts Conjure Woodland Beings, which is a concentration spell, they do not lose their concentration on that spell when the Pixies polymorph them, even though polymorph states, the target's game statistics, including mental ability scores, are replaced by the statistics of the chosen beast. Both Mike Merles and Jeremy Crawford from the Dungeons & Dragons team confirmed this when asked via Twitter. However, in order for this spell to continue to work, the druid must maintain concentration on the Conjure Woodland Being spell, and in turn, the pixies must maintain concentration on their polymorph spells. And if either should take damage, they will continue to have to make concentration checks. Now that we know what the combo is, why it works, and all of its limitations, we can discuss this a bit more in depth. So my question to you as dungeon masters and game masters is, what should you do if your players attempt to use this combination? I mean, should players even be allowed to use this particular strategy? See, the way that I see it is as DMs, we have a few different options that we can go by. The first and easiest choice is to simply disallow this spell at the table. Conjuration spells are clunky and time consuming and often, as we can see here, are game breaking. So simply telling our players no before they take the spell instead of arguing with them later is obviously an easy solution. The second option we have is to allow the players to take the spell but either choose the face they, that they summon ourselves, which is certainly our right as listed by the spell, or let the player choose but remove pixies from their choices, just like they do in the Adventures League. The third option we have is to allow the players to openly roll for the summoned creatures, either individually or as a group to see what they get. There's only a few options of CR 1 4th Fey, and making a small table shouldn't be a terrible hassle to do. The fourth option we have is to complicate what happens when the Fey follow the druid's commands. So the spell clearly says that the Fey obey all commands, but we can have them take everything literally. 
or have them follow commands poorly. Sure, they polymorph the players, but they don't know what a T-Rex looks like, or they polymorph them, but they immediately stop concentrating on the spell. Or maybe they hide, but they do it poorly, so they end up taking damage, etc. And then the final option, of course, is to just say yes and accept that the players are playing within the rules and take your opportunity to challenge them back and overcome their newfangled strategy, turning it into a plot device for your campaign. Now, I don't know if there is a 100% right or wrong answer here. I even think that I might go different routes depending on the group that I'm running for. But the one thing that I would advise is if your players are power gaming like this, then be mindful of how much time and spotlight one particular player is getting and make sure that they are not overshadowing everyone else at the table. In this particular case, I would actually consider this less of a problem, mostly because the strategy specifically involves the entire party. At least everyone at the table is getting to roll lots of dice and dealing lots of damage. So it's it's not big of a, as big of an issue here. So I'm gonna pull a little Don Forged here and leave the question to you guys as far as what to do. But if you decide to allow this particular strategy at your table, I thought it might be fun to come up with a few different ideas for how dungeon masters might handle this particular combination from their players. Right off the bat, I would throw away the kid gloves. So your players are clearly gunning for you and you're completely justified to squash them like the insignificant insects they are. I would immediately go right at them. I'm talking mind flayers and intellect devourers. If your players end up with an intelligence modifier of minus four, just so they could wipe out your bandits without breaking a sweat, then yeah, you can punish them for it. Also, something to consider, by the time your players are level eight, they will start to have become renowned a bit. So if this is a regular strategy, even in the jungles of Cholt, for those of you playing through Tomb of Annihilation, then it's certainly reasonable that an intelligent villain would find ways of dealing with this particular strategy. So perhaps the villain casts a similar spell of their own, turning a bunch of custom CR5 bugbear guardians into a group of eight triceratops. So having your smart ass players all in the form of T-Rexes suddenly engaged in a dinosaur battle could be a fun way to let them feel awesome while still giving them a run for their money. I would also be sure to use AOE spells against them. So not only do you run the chance of killing the pixies if you catch them in the blast, but the druid player will also have to make a concentration check, which if they fail, the pixies will become unsummoned and everybody in the party will revert to normal just like that. And finally, you can always take advantage of the situation and use this as a plot device instead. So how will the rest of the Fae feel if their kin continue to be summoned to the material plane just to be slaughtered? How would players react if they are wanted by the Fae court? What would happen if the party casually went into another battle ready to summon their pixies and continue abusing this combo and a powerful Fae Lord shows up in the midst of battle instead of their expected pixies. That's actually a pretty cool campaign hook in my opinion. I'm expecting a lot of really awesome back and forth this week and I guess I should go ahead and apologize for asking so many different questions as part of this particular topic. I just think that this is a really great topic that has a lot of different angles. Should players even use combos like this? Should dungeon masters let them? How can DMs handle it if they do? And does it take away from the table's experience if players are abusing a combination like this over and over. I do wanna take a moment and thank all of the kick-ass patrons who are supporting the channel. I'm really looking forward to hanging out with you guys next week and talking about all of your individual campaigns. So if you guys like what I do here and you wanna see more stuff, you can join the Taking 20 Patreon community by checking out the link down in the description below and check out all of the new rewards that we got going on right now over on the Patreon page. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week we'll be putting out new videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody 
And may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.